first example of parametric polymorphism that we want to show is a class that takes a type parameter. Now, my motivating example that I'm going to use here is assuming we're running some type of a theme park and we need to associate different data with different hours of the day. So maybe it is who is running rides or maybe it is counts for number of riders, but I have this need to associate data with each hour in the day for 24 days, or for 24 hours each day. So first we're gonna make a package here and we're going to call it theme park. And we'll close our original polymorphism package and then we'll go ahead and we'll make a new class. And I'm gonna call it TOD values, short for time of day values. And once again, the goal is that this stores values associated with the hours in a day. And where the polymorphism comes in, the new topic here, is the fact that I am going to add, in square brackets, the letter A here. Okay, now, square brackets in Scala, as we kind of saw in the last video, are used to hold type parameters. Normal parameters are stuck inside of parentheses. We've seen that, and this is just a general rule. If you, if you have general parameters, they are going to be inside of, they have values, they will be inside of parentheses, and if they are storing types, they will be inside of square brackets. Here we are giving a name for our type parameter. We're just calling it A. This is also a standard thing to do. It turns out that your type parameters are typically given single capital letters. It's capital because it's a type, it's a single letter because no one should ever make a real type with that name and you don't want this to conflict with any real types because this could be anything. This could be whatever it is that we want, just like our array of, we could make it an int, we could make it a string, we could make it a boolean. Here we can make a time of day values that is an int, an array, a boolean, whatever. We could, this A will take the place of that but no one should ever write a class A in a real program, and if they do, they deserve whatever bad things happen to them. Okay, so first, I said that we're gonna store data associated with different hours of the day. So I'm gonna make a val that stores the values, and the type of this is an array of option of A, because it's possible that certain hours don't have information associated with them. And there, because there are 24 hours in the day, I'm going to make this array be filled with 24 values of none. Okay. So what methods would I like to put in here? Well, I'd like users to be able to get out the value for a particular time of day. That's nicely done with apply. I should be able to kind of index into here where my hour is an integer, and this is just going to return values sub hour dot get. I need a... This is kind of a, a... This method has risks to it. If you call this on an hour that does not have data associated with it, it will crash because you can't call get on an option that that is a... That whose value is none, uh, but it turns out this is actually similar to behavior of some of the built-in uh, collections in Scala. So we're gonna give create a safe way to access it. So we pass in an hour to this. This is actually going to give us back the option of A. I'm putting the type here to be explicit, and this gives you back values of the hour that was asked for. So this could give you back none, as opposed to crashing, if that hour does not have a defined value. I'm making this mutable. That was, I'm, this is an array, so the array is mutable, that's why I made it private. But I actually want to allow the users of this to be able to set values in here. So they can set for a particular hour a new value, which is of type A. And what that's going to do is it's going to set values of that hour equal to a sum of the V that was passed in. So this will only 
associate a value. You couldn't clear it uh, doing that. Um, okay. How about, well, I said you just, you can't clear it. How about we include a method so that you can clear out an hour? So we pass in hour as an int. And what this is going to do is it is going to take values sub hour and set it equal to none. Um, okay. The goal here, once again, we have a type parameter, so this can take any type that we want. Um, what are some other functionality that we might want to have associated with this? Well, I would like to be able to combine two of these. So if I have a TOD values of int, and then well, maybe I have two of them for ints uh, that deal with two different things that I want wish to be able to add together. Well then I'd like to be able to combine this TOD value with the other values. And for now, we will make it so it uses the same type A. We'll come back and explore how we could be more flexible there. And it also needs to have a function that is of the type for how it's going to combine things. So this function, I want it to take an option of A and another option. Of a. So it takes in two options of A and it is supposed to return another option of A. Okay. So for example, if A was ints for both of them, maybe it would be, in fact this would be a meaningful thing to do, if they were both none, we'd get back a none. If one of them was a sum, then it would be the value of that one and if they were both sums, it would add together their values. That would be a meaningful use of this. And it gives back a new time of day values for us, which we could allocate. So we can set, I'm going to make some variable called ret, which is a new TOD values of our type A that we will wind up giving back. And in between these, I want to run through all of my values. and indices. Okay. And I want to pull these from, we're going to take the values for this kind of group of hours and the values from the uh, from the ones that were passed in. And I want to zip them together. Okay, So the zipped method, uh, if we haven't seen that yet in this series of videos, takes a tuple of collections and produces a collection of tuples. So it, it sticks all of them together. And the advantage of that is that zipped has a map that takes, argument, that takes a function that takes two arguments. So we have a v1 and a v2 as our two values here. And I want to apply my f to v1 and v2. Okay, so what this does is it's just going to take the, the first thing from this values and the first thing from the other values and, it's, uh, and apply this function to them. And then it'll do the second one and the third one and the fourth one. And then I need to, so that I have the index, I'm going to do zip with index here. And what I want to do inside of this loop is I want to say ret.values sub i equals v. So this will combine two kind of general time of day values, but it and it will do it using a general function that we pass in assuming that the types on, on things are the same. So we're going to close out this video here, and we'll come back and we'll look at how we can use this in the next video.